We're back by popular demand, it seems. It seems that uh, a few people out there must like the way I do things. You know, there's a lot of different ways to put these uh, window air conditioners in. Uh, I wasn't going to do this video, and then um, uh, enough uh, comments were made in the last video that, what, you put it in and didn't show us any step-by-step. -step. Uh, briefly, I'm, I'm just going to kind of go over what I did. Obviously, it's already in, but I can point out a couple things why why this went really well. It, it was uh, went pretty easy. You know, it still took a little bit of time to do, but um, I think it came out really good. I'll show you what I did, and then um, a couple of comments and concerns I want to address about what's going on back here. Uh, also in the last video between the uh, air conditioner and the, the bike rack and things about the block, the, the tail lights and brake lights and the license plate thing and uh, carbon monoxide back here from the air, uh, generator. You know, when, when I do run that, there's a, I'll, I'll address those things in a minute. Let me go through a couple of things here real quick how I, how I put this here in here. The easiest thing to do would be probably start with this window over here that's still in. This has, yeah, you know, there's only four nuts that hold this, hold this glass in. And there's also some uh, holes already existing in here. Uh, yeah, down at the bottom, three up top, and, and this here. I think that was for the type of window that there was a latch here that you could open it up for ventilation. I'd like to get a set of those, actually. But these uh, stock windows that don't open, there's just four nuts in here. And there's a rubber gasket. It's probably about a half inch thick. Uh, you take the nuts off and you get a little screwdriver or pry bar and you get between the door and the gasket, not between the gasket and the glass, because that would, you would, it wouldn't take much to shatter that glass. You'd never want to pry on glass. So you get over on this side of it and uh, just gently pry in a couple of places between the gasket and the door. Uh, and then, you know, it just starts kind of coming out. It's not, uh, not too hard at all actually to get that out of there so once that was out oh and there was also a lot of uh, goop from the original gasket on the opposite side of that actually so i just got a rag with some gasoline on it and i went around and got all that goop off of there cleaned it up real good all right let's go over here a minute so there is, uh, yeah, somebody's probably going to say, oh, you should use thicker plywood than that. That's going to break or something. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, no. This, um, you want thin enough plywood that will actually conform to the curvature of the door. Uh, use thicker plywood, a half inch or five eighths. It, it's just, it's too stiff. It won't, you won't have the bend here. This is three eighths plywood and it worked perfectly. Here's a sheet of, um, I think this is about half inch and you know it will give you could probably get away with that but it's certainly getting stiffer there's no way five i don't think five eighths would uh would conform to the curvature uh, i'll show you here what i did how i cut this out and uh no you might see there's no cracks in this window that was some uh, uh home done window tint that got a crease or a wrinkle in it so uh all right let me set this up here so as you can see this uh you know plywood typically uh the thinner it gets you can see it kind of naturally has a a bow to it so you want to take advantage of that that bow and because the glass let me take the let me take the glass off of this so if you set your plywood that already has a bow in it and you put it on some saw horses or between a box and a chair it, you know that extra weight yeah uh, it actually doesn't take much and see i can just push down on that and it's there so what i did was i just did that i got a pencil and i just traced this out very very neatly the whole way around got my jigsaw and cut it and it was just a perfect fit first time easy perfect you see how you'll see how uh my nice set fits when we go back out i did have a wee little whoops but it's I went off the line a little bit, but it didn't matter. It, it still, you probably wouldn't notice it unless I pointed it out. But yeah, so, uh, oh, and those uh, three nuts, or the four nuts that came off, there's like uh, little studs that are like, almost like a little carriage bolt that goes through the glass and you just, the, there's already holes in the glass. You just push them out. Uh, I saved that, I saved those in case that comes out someday and I want to put the glass back in it. 
Uh, so three eighths ply would work perfect. So those holes that already exist in it that I showed you on the other side here, I took advantage of the, uh, I took advantage of a couple of them, and I put the uh, to just to kind of dry fit it. I took advantage of some of the holes that were already there. I just put the plywood up against it, and I ran a couple of a couple of screws in those existing holes, uh, just to make sure it fit. And yeah, and it it just conformed. You know, the the shape just conformed to the curvature of the door, so that was a nice fit. Now the holes, some of the holes were already there, like I said, some of them were not. So what I did was, uh, like I said, I put temporary screws in from the inside. And then I went around here and I marked kind of four places equally spaced. Uh, I forget where these two were in or these two were in, whichever. <laughs> uh, I drilled four there or drilled additional ones. So there's four up and down each side. There's four across the top and four all equally spaced. And these are uh, machine screws, 10. I think these are 1032 machine screws by one inch long. Obviously, I probably could have used three quarter inch long. Uh, they wouldn't have stuck out so much, but uh, that doesn't matter. That'll be fine. So I think it helps with the look that it's they're equally spaced and uh, yeah. So then I started adding the the uh, the screws in the holes that I had drilled and uh, I put a flat washer. A lock washer and a nut on those and then took the temporary screws out and uh, just replaced them so that all in all there are 16 the whole way around there uh, you might want to wonder what's going on here <laughs> we'll get to that I should back up a minute before I put all those in uh, the 1032s and uh, I went ahead I drilled all the holes and then I took the uh, uh, the temporary screws out and took the the uh, plywood over uh, inside the garage and I measured out for this you know 12 by 17 square in it uh, and I really cut it oversized on purpose I didn't want it to have to fight it and have to trim it and all that I left a, a 16th plus you know a 16th inch easy on the even even that on the heavy side probably a 16th to an eighth so I, I wouldn't struggle trying to get it past any little weird high spots that are on the on the uh, air conditioner in the top even though this is 12 inches well by the time you go at an angle i took a rough measurement at, at that angle and it was about i forget about a half inch you know going up and down it's one thing well when you tilt it that becomes a longer distance so i think i allowed about a half inch or five eighths for that and it actually worked out being um, almost too tight. I, the air conditioner came down just level in a wee little bit. I just got lucky and it worked out perfect. So it slants downhill just a little bit. Okay, so now with that cut out, you know, I brought it back over and I put all the permanent 10, 30, the 16 permanent 1032s with lock washers and that's it okay so now it's <laughs> all right now i did not put any sealer and uh i just didn't put any sealer between this and the door i probably but it might have been a good idea to do that but it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine you'll see okay it's not done yet uh what else so okay so we put the air conditioner in and kind of same thing i put a couple of temporary screws in up top uh, just to hold it. I think I used these These holes at the time a couple in there just to kind of hold it and get it situated until I <laughs> Could figure out what I was dealing with and what I ended up doing was uh, Put There's this metal flange on the top of this air conditioner that I guess would go against the window You know like in a house or apartment and it just worked out that it had well it only had one hole in the center so I put a screw in there then I drilled my own uh, on each end, a uh, quarter inch, uh, a little bit over, I think, uh, 9 30 seconds or whatever, and put quarter 20, a quarter 20 bolts through there. Again, with lock washers and nuts. 
and those are these up here okay there's three of those across there so um that's not that air conditioner's not going to go anywhere believe me that is as solid as that's about as solid as it gets there uh then i got this broad idea to do that down at the bottom too now i already had this this kind of chain this um this angle iron already has the holes in it this is available at any home improvement store or tractor supply a lot of places have this and i didn't i already had this on here because of the way i i set it in the window in the bounder uh and because it really just didn't catch there was just no way to uh catch that type of window so i added this uh back then but it came in handy here so just to, to uh have something to bolt to i cut lengths of uh two by six yeah they're wider yeah two by six uh you know that distance and because this row, row of holes was you know too close just the way it comes up under this uh foot on the air conditioner the the hole came just a little bit too close to the edge uh i didn't want i wanted to avoid splitting even though i still pre-drilled i i still didn't want to take a chance on it pre-spitting so i wanted to move it down to the center of the two by so i drilled um so until i try to equally space stuff so it just looks uniform <laughs> it's my it's my uh i just can't i just have to do it it's kind of being yeah i drilled those uh, yeah i drilled quarter inch through the angle but only three sixteenths through the um to depth through the board so that's pre-drilled for a quarter quarter inch lag screws and these are inch and a half long this one is barely started uh the other ones are a little bit longer the other ones are two inches long on the outside so they kind of meet they come close to meeting in the middle but they don't run into each other uh so i just left that one out because i just want to show you what type of what type of bolt i use there i'm still not gonna run it in quite the whole way yet because i'll show you hit that in a second so same thing i kind of measured out now we do have a couple extra holes up here because the day i initially put this in actually the day was starting to run late and it's like let's just put those let's just get them in there run some screws in it at least um uh, you know i was over at my oldest son's garage doing this part of it and uh i don't know i had to go over there for some reason or another and i said give me a hand cutting these spacers and and holding them and we'll screw them in actually i held them and we was both getting impatient it was late we was doing other stuff and uh so we just kind of ran them in at random spots but uh but now i'll probably fill those with something uh oh some caulking when i go around and do this here uh the edge of this and uh it's all get painted so uh, you'll never we won't see those holes no big deal anyway but uh yeah two two so that's in solid uh let's go back around the other side all right i want to show you something on this uh with this power drill here yeah i'm just real careful to to set this uh set the clutch on these you know these are numbered one through ten uh, as far as the you know where they where it clutches at or slips and then there's a uh, one more setting that it just it'll it, you can give it everything it has but um uh, i try to set it you know i'll run it in some i'll set it light and run it in some and see where the clutch starts slipping or, or ratcheting it actually acts like a uh, like an impact gun almost although this is not an impact uh and then i'll dial it up another number or two and uh that gives it more strength it'll run it in further but i i only set it enough to get it in uh, that runs it in the whole way and actually tightens it a little bit uh if you use too big a number uh that's too much strength you could run those in and strip them out so and i treated these little 1032s the same way i want to draw that up tight but i didn't want the i didn't want it to be so powerful that it sunk these heads you know deep into the wood uh, that was the first one i did it actually sunk it in maybe a little bit more than i wanted so i backed it off one number and there still kind of pulls it in but it doesn't you know it doesn't just draw it in and halfway into the plywood too deep and uh because that compromises the structural integrity of that whole whole little deal there 
So, all right, so back to this. Let me run this last one in. For an example, I have this set on six and it'll probably come closer to running it in. Say so it stopped, come up a little bit short. So we'll, we'll bump this up to seven. You should run it in a little bit more, maybe the whole way. Yeah, that's it. It ran it out, the washer's tight now. And because this actually, because that ratcheting noise has, uh, oops, I dropped this. You know, it does have some impact uh, qualities to it, an impact effect. So actually just running that for a couple, a second or two. Uh, that's gonna be good enough. I could bump it up on eight and really, you know, but now I risk start getting eight, nine, ten. You know, I just don't. They're tight. This thing is not going anywhere. I mean, four quarter inch lag screws on that side, four on this side. We got uh, three regular quarter twenties up here through that metal flange. Sixteen. 1032s all around this thing is it's really solid uh it worked out really well for me and and this is so solid in fact i mean it's like the whole door if i pull on it it's like the whole door moves uh so put some clocking around it oh and these vents because this is at an angle these vents actually ran to the inside a little bit so um well they start right about here you can feel about just a couple of them here. So I choose to put duct tape over those vents. Now, what else? I'm gonna finish this up at, uh, there's a lot of suggestions too about what color to <laughs> do these backs. I'll get to that in a second too. Uh, I'm gonna finish this up by painting, uh, giving this another coat and then caulking around here. You know, once that's, these pores are all flooded with, uh, you know, a coating. And it dries it'll be it'll be sealed and i'll and i'll uh put caulking around that it'll be fine i don't, really don't need it between here and the door it, it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine and i will say here real quick with even with the bike on this door over here does open up the whole way it actually comes and it hits this guard on my bike yeah, but if I just pull, if I just pull just a wee little bit of my bike, it goes right past that so little. So it's nice that this door, uh, at least this one, will open up the whole way. The other one will only up a little, open up a little bit if the generator is down here. Uh, if I take the generator off, it will open. Uh, same thing. I actually have to tug on the bike a little bit and uh, get to get it past. So access is okay. So speaking of the generator. This generator on here, on this rack, running and running the air conditioner. There was a concern about the air conditioner drawing in carbon monoxide. Uh, well, it doesn't do that. Uh, I don't believe there's any danger at all about that. And the reason why I say that is these uh, air conditioners are one side is insulated from the other or isolated so this side is drawing in air from the outside on both sides yet you know it has that same vent over here so this side of the air conditioner is drawing air from here but expelling that out here this side of the uh, air conditioner draws air from the inside through this filter and out the top so they're, you know, so it's 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 the divided unit it goes in from here, out there, and this goes in from here and out there. They don't. Now I should say there are some air conditioners that have the feature that you can throw a lever and it will actually draw from the uh, air from the outside and cool it and bring it in, or you throw it back the other way and then it's just it's just recirculating indoor air. So there are those that has that feature. This is not one of those. I couldn't accidentally turn that on to where it was drawing from the outside, even if I wanted to. Uh, the other reason is these gaskets, this the, they're the weather stripping around these doors. Both of them are still in really good shape. They seal really nice. And 
uh, there's no water leaks when it rains and uh, and this has run before I ran it for uh, I don't know, about an hour or so the other day and I don't smell anything there's uh I've really looked at those uh, weather stripping really close they're, they're in good shape so we're okay I still might put a carbon monoxide detector inside just better safe than sorry right okay what else <laughs> what else was the concern oh the color the color the color uh hang on a second it's my it's my camera thing was coming loose okay <laughs> the color uh, a lot of comments in the last uh two uh ideas and such and i read i read them all i considered you know i do like the white thing there was a suggestion about uh getting that white vinyl that perforated white vinyl you know just has a, like a whole bunch of little holes all it's like a screen the where you know and you can get them with a logo printed on it too so i can put that on that black window and go with white uh but i'm gonna go with black instead now i before, i know folks will say that he you know black absorbs heat and, and white kind of doesn't uh i know that <laughs> but that's such a small area it's not like I'm re repainting the the root, whole roof of the van block. That would be a lot. The little bit, matter of fact, I might even spray the uh, little bit of the air conditioner black. Now, hang, bear with me here. Um, and the, I guess one reason is I like the look that, you know, the van has windows. It's got a, a black and white theme going on. Uh, I like the, the look of the black. And from a security standpoint, it occurred to me that in no way do I want to obscure that window. Maybe I should say, you know, if some would-be thief wanted to mess around back here, I don't want them, I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I can't see out that window. That window's been covered and nobody can see out it, you know. So I want to leave that window just as it is that, you know, I can look out that window if I want to look out that window. And even with that perforated stuff, you can still see out. I, I know that. I've, I've checked that stuff out. It's pretty cool. But still the impression is that window functions just fine uh to anybody else but it's not obscured in any way uh that and oh i was saying i'm probably going to spray the air conditioner black too not the top of it nobody can see the top of it unless you're really tall i'll leave that white but i might like lightly uh I just kind of uh, spray that and I'm, I'm, i'll i'll mask this off and the trim around it and all this black and uh i'm using black sealer around it and the cover that goes on here is also black so i did buy a cover for it so i don't think that's enough to you know if that was a larger solid surface i might be concerned about it but there's so like little surface area with all these vents you know yeah and it's a huge vented area <laughs> yeah there's vents the whole way across the top too so not just the sides so any heat that is kind of accumulated, I mean, it just it just dissipates. I mean, it just it just vents. You know, the breeze just it's not going to get hot. It's just, just not enough to make a difference. It's such a small area. What else? Anything else about the air conditioner? Does that cover everything? Oh, I did get a tool. I do have a tool coming. To, there's a special little tool you can straighten these fins up. I did. Uh, that's actually going to be here today. So I'll work on uh, getting that straightened up. I almost forgot too that even though this thing is really solid in here i probably will still add uh, a small uh brace back here because anything over time still you know hitting bumps in the road i don't know it's really solid um you know over time if this thing does have a a, a little bit of bounce to it i mean e even a, a slight bounce that could uh over time that could you know stress and, and work on possibly screws loosening or so something uh anytime you can take any kind of bounce out of uh, anything uh it's just so much better so you know i don't need one of those big racks you know it's not um to support it it's it, it, it that part of it's fine uh even a small and i'd probably do it right here in the middle where it would go through here and uh, through the metal of the door. I don't want to drill or weld on my door, but in here where it would be hidden, 
I might get a piece of like a eighth inch or three sixteenths by a one inch wide or inch and a quarter wide strapping and it just come up uh, putting a bend in it where it comes up to the uh, back of the air conditioner here and I mean, I'd have to watch where I drill. <laughs> I have to watch how I attach that. I don't want to drill in my, into my coils there, but uh, somehow uh, just that extra support, the uh, leg of support there would just would, you know, really make it more solid. But I mean, not that it's not solid. I don't know if I should bother. That thing's in there. I'm telling you. And I'm going to do the same thing with the rack. I haven't yet. I've done it with all my other racks. Once it's all you know done said and done and sometimes i adjust them to choke up on them a little bit uh, i had to pick another pinhole there um, it stuck out further than it needed to i slid it in drilled a new hole and repinned it so um there's no point in having excess distance back here that can just create that can create more bounce too so we choked up on that distance repinned it and two they make like ant little anti-wobble devices that go in there to take up uh, to put pressure on these things because they do you know they, they do wobble but th those don't work very well at all uh i'll probably weld a bra i'll probably either weld or just drill and bolt i'll get some uh, angle iron pieces or something and and i will mount each corner i'll put a brace at each corner on the on this thing and that just takes any sway and wobble and it really makes this solid too and uh, so that's the other thing i gotta get to <laughs> I like things to be right and just strong and I don't have to worry about things wobbling around and bouncing and I don't want nothing happening back here. I don't want none of my stuff out in the bouncing down the highway. I should mention too that you know I'm not one to when it comes to hardware and mounting things, I don't like taking shortcuts. I always say it's better to over engineer something than under engineer it. And, you know, I'm not going to make do with, well, we have these screws, you know, an old coffee can or something that, yeah, these screws, yeah, they'll work. It'd be good enough. No, I, there's, you know, the ideal hardware for particular jobs and uh, for strength and lo load carrying. And, uh, you know, instead of having a bolt that's too short, that that's only on by a couple of threads or not having enough thread to use the amount of washers you need and you know all that stuff really should be right so that you don't have problems stuff vibrating and coming you know bolts falling out and uh better to over engineer it and something like this you know if it starts to fail and screws start popping out or whatever you don't want you to look in your rear view mirror and see your air conditioner bouncing down the road so causing a wreck and bad things happening so you know just, just stuff is worth doing and not having to go back because oftentimes when something fails not not only might this break but it's gonna break something else and now you got a bigger problem it just it just ain't worth it just get the right stuff all right the other thing was is that gonna block is the bike gonna block the brake lights i say no not enough to matter no nope. so in the license plate thing that was the other concern in uh four years of traveling roughly you know with uh my first uh motorhome the tioga you know i had a motorcycle rack the same motorcycle rack that's on the bounder and a motorcycle <laughs> and it blocked the license plate really bad and the same thing with the bounder when that motorcycle is on the back of the bounder you cannot see the license plate at all until you were to be maybe you was passing me and you came up about about this far because it would be it would be down here and you'd have to look and get a quick look at it but you know what uh a lot of police have passed me in all my travels not once have i ever been stopped or pulled over and i actually heard now i can't verify this but i actually heard where somebody was given a hard time because they moved their license plate from the the location that it is meant to be and you know they might have moved it up on one of the windows or on down on the bumper somewhere where they thought that the police could see it better and they actually said <laughs> the cop actually said no put that license plate where by law that's where it belongs put it there so so what if it's obscured put it where it belongs 
so there's that too like i say i can't verify that story but i just know in all my travels i've never had a problem with it and believe me this uh is blocked a lot less on the van than uh what they have been on the motorhomes what else let's take a quick look at something i think for the heck of it let's let's do a quick test let's see what we got here i don't know i think they look fine and besides that the uh it has the little cyclops light up top too so you know when i hit the when the uh hit the brakes that that one up top comes on too that that's gonna be fine there's there's not gonna be any issue there what else i think we're getting everything about covered <laughs> the other thing i like paint black too is that cover i just hate this big ugly and white and sticks out like a sore thumb they sell those in black and smoke colored uh the black one it's just so you know inside it's just not it just reduces the amount of daylight that comes inside and uh i don't know the reason for the smoke one but both of those were twice the price as the white one and they were not in stock anyway so i bought the white one uh i know again got to consider how much heat that's going to make right yeah, i mean that is like a 14 by 14 area four inches that is it could be tremendous I know I'm being a smart, you know, what now, so. Uh, I don't know. I was just thinking about it. I just probably won't mess with it. It'll be half hidden soon anyway, because I got stuff coming for the roof here. We'll see what it, we'll see what it ends up like in the end, and uh, I'll go from there. I'm going to turn these back off. Lights off. Four ways off. All right. let's see was there anything else anything else all right talk about the carbon monoxide door access license plate lights the how-to on the air conditioner yeah the cover actually got here yesterday i'll i gotta finish that up i can get that painted today and uh, uh get all those screws and drills and tools put away uh, put the paint away and the uh, caulking away and put that project to bed so to speak all right I'm, i still got it i think next on the list is that i gotta put get that plug put in and then i can kind of put this hole back in uh put it all to bed bella come here bella uh, bella you want to be on youtube again come on come on what is she doing in the van huh what are you doing in the van i'm just hanging out watch this Bella. Hey, Bella. Where's them bad deer? Where's them bad deer? Where are they? Where's the bad deer? Huh? Where's those bad deer? Huh? Where are they? Where's the bad deer? Go get them. Go get them. Get them. Get those bad deers. Go get them. <laughs> She knows they're not out here. She looks uh, she looks really close for them in the mornings and in the evenings. She knows that's kind of what when they're out and about. Hi right, girl. Go, go, go. Watch, right back in the van. Oh, one last thing too. I do have reflectors. They will be here today. They're uh they're little strip reflectors. Not the not the cheap tape. Uh, not reflective tape, just you know it's it's only good for a while and it gets all faded and it's no point in having it on there i do have regular reflectors coming there uh i think they're five eighths this is three quarter inch wide uh, i think they're five eighths by four inches long so i have four of them coming so one will go uh on each end facing the back and then there's room here then i'll put one on on either end too so we're gonna add a little bit of safety a little a little measure of safety on that front as well are we done can we be done all right <laughs> all right well um that's all i don't know what's next there'll be plenty we still have that surprise unboxing to do surely that'll be in the next video i think so all right i'll be back uh we'll be back soon thanks for watching and uh 
Yeah, I'll see you next time. <laughs>